Welcome everybody to this Tabletop Battlefield episode. I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield, and my painty clothes are on, so that means it's time to go ahead and work on another miniature project. In this case, since I'm doing a terrible job of hiding it, because I think you can see it right down here before I hold it up, we're getting back into the Reaver Titan series from Deathus Titanicus, and today we're focusing on his weapon over here, the Melta Cannon. So let's get started. This miniature started out being primed in Chaos Black from Games Workshop Citadel line of paints. And I'm using my custom priming tool. You can find a link to that in the show notes of this video to apply the primer from all different directions in a very easy and simple fashion. So the first step here with the melt cannon is to work in the mechanical parts. And just like we did with the legs and things of the other part of the Reaver Titan, we're going to start with a base coat of Dawnstone Gray from Games Workshop Citadel line of paints. We're gonna let the first layer dry for a bit, and then we'll apply a second thin down layer of the Dawnstone Gray. Even if the Dawnstone Gray is not fully dried, we're gonna move on to the next layer. This is gonna be some non-oil gloss. This is a shade from Games Workshop Citadel line of paints. And we're just gonna cover the entire mechanical area of the weapon with this color. While the shade is drying, we're going to start working on the armor panels that are on the Melta Cannon. And for that, we're going to work with Rhinox Hide from Games Workshop Citadel line of paints. Now this is a base color, so you want to water it down just a tiny bit. Now eventually these trim pieces here are going to become gold, but what I'm going to do initially is put a little bit of the Rhinox Hide along the elevated trims of the armor panels. And I'm painting these first, because of the fact that they're elevated, they're going to be kind of hard to paint over when we give the normal color to the rest of the armor panel, but if we were to paint the armor panel color first, it's actually quite easy to accidentally paint over that with the trim color. So you're painting the armor panel here on the inside of the gun. This is where you're gonna wish you would have painted first, assembled later. Fortunately, if you screw up in here, no one's probably gonna notice. In a continuing effort to be efficient, we're going to move on to working on the main weapon area while everything dries. And we're going to start off with a base of Cantor Blue. I kind of imagine a Melta Cannon is blue, as a Plasma Cannon is also blue, and frankly most guns are probably blue, except for the Volcano Cannon, that screams red to me. Gee, I wonder why. So, let's get started here by painting the main weapon a base coat of Cantor Blue. Of course, this is a base color from Games Workshop Citadel line of paints. You want to be very intentional about actually getting some paint down in all the little recesses between, I guess we'll call them the coils of the Melta Cannon. I'm not sure what the proper terminology is for a made up Warhammer. 40,000 techno babble, but you know. <laughs> well, the Cantor Blue is out, let's start painting the insides of the armor panels. To help ensure you get an even coat of color on the armor panel, you're probably going to want to apply two or even three layers of paint. If you do that, be sure to give yourself a little bit of time between the layers to let the paint dry. Or with the shade and the mechanical areas dry, I want to apply one more layer of the Nun Oil Shade to bring out even more details by getting it into the various recessed areas and help making the contrast of those areas a little bit more noticeable. We're going to move back to the main barrel of the weapon, and this time we're going to be applying Temple Guard Blue. And we want to apply this only to the raised areas of the coil, so don't get it in the recessed areas. Therefore, we have some nice contrast, and therefore the detail will be nice and easy for eyes to pick out. Now, it wouldn't be a YouTube tutorial of mine without some amount of experimentation while I'm doing the tutorial. So I've got some of the new Citadel Contrast paints here. This is Talisar Blue. I'm going to apply this all over the main barrel of the weapon, and let's just see what happens. Moving back to the mechanical parts, we're going to do some dry brushing now. And at first, I'm going to be pulling out some Lead Belcher from Games Workshop Citadel line of paints. I know this is a base color, but it's also a bit of a silver color, and it'd be good to dry brush over our weird combination of dark gray and black that we have on there right now. For this step, I am not using my Artificer Layer Extra Small brush. I am using a dry brush from the Army Painters War Paint series. And yes, I realize I'm holding it upside down. <laughs> it's time to work on the main armor panel again. And with this Reaver Titan, what I've been doing is I have a brighter blue color in front and I fade to the base color in back. Now this panel looks a little bit different than it did earlier in this process. I assure you I did not already record this once using the wrong color of blue. Is it the first time I've done this? Seriously. I 
dead serious about that. There's no accent on wrong color blue already once this time around. So what I'm going to be using is some Altdorf Guard Blue. And I'm going to be applying maybe five or six thin down layers of this, focusing pretty heavily on the front of the armor panel and less of it in the back. If you're not quite happy with the transition and you want a little more darker color into it, you can take some of the Cantar Blue, water it down, and work it into the back armor and kind of reduce that transition effect just a little bit. And feel free to blend both colors together as well as they're wet if you want to try to get a little bit more of an interesting blending method going on. I'm going to have to leave that alone for a little bit, so let's jump back to the weapon. I'm not entirely sure if I like how the experiment with the contrast paints turned out, but I'll go with it. So what I want to do is now add some more brighter colors to the front of the barrel, just kind of make it look like a, I don't know, almost more of an artistic transition, but maybe you can argue that it's an energy coil preparing to fire. Let's get our temple guard blue back out and I'm going to dry brush this stuff along all the sides of the coils for maybe half of the barrel starting at the front of the barrel. So now I want to mix some white into my temple guard blue to get a bit of lighter color. Do the same kind of thing again but only cover maybe about a quarter of the barrel. So let's go with maybe two thirds temple guard blue and one third a white color. In this case, I'm using linen white from Reaper's Master Series. All right, one more time with even more white and even less of a barrel coverage. And finally, one more dry brush pass with just the linen white, focusing only on one or two energy coils of the weapon. And if you feel you made it a little bit too intense, feel free to walk it back by kind of blending in some of the Temple Guard blue and just kind of working around a little bit. Time to start working on some of the barrel details. It's going to be a lot of gold at this point, but before I put the gold down, I want to put some Rhinox Hide down. Now, of course, for you, it's really up to you as to what colors you actually want to make gold. For me, I'm going to start with the whole front plate here, make this all be tarnished gold look. Next, this ridge that runs down the middle of the barrel, that's going to have a gold base. So this other ring that's on the back of the weapon is going to be painted gold as well. And then whatever this thing is at the bottom of the gun, I'm going to paint that gold too to make it stand out. I really have no idea what this thing's for. And the last part are these little doodads back here right behind the barrel of the weapon. I have, you know, like, <laughs> oh yeah, let's face it, I have no idea what any of the parts of this weapon are. I'm just kind of be trying to BS stuff, but I keep saying the same thing every time, don't I? Well, I got the Rhinex hide out. Let me clean up these ridges on the armor panel that got covered up because I got a little overzealous with the blending and uh, that one layer that didn't actually happen, I promise. I didn't screw up and never redo. <laughs> so for all the areas I just painted a Rhinex hide, I'm going to go back over the gold color. In this case, I'm using Greedy Gold from the Army Painters War Paint series. The key thing here is I don't have to cover everything. It's all right to have some of the brown show through. It gives that old, worn, tarnished look. Now we're gonna work on some edge highlighting the gold. We're gonna take Stormhost Silver. This is a layer paint from Games Workshop Citadel line of paints. Mix it with our gold and apply it to just some of the edges around the gold areas of the weapon. It's time to knock down the gold shininess a little bit. This is where the Seraphin Sepia is going to come in. This is a Citadel shade from Games Workshop's line of paints. So coat various parts of the gold with this color. You don't have to do all the gold, just some of it, because once again you're trying to sell the whole 10,000 year old war machine type look. We've got one more thing to work on with the barrel of the weapon, but you got to let that wash dry first. So let's add some rust effects to the mechanic areas of this weapon system. I'm going to start with the Seraph and Sepia. I'm just going to kind of coat several areas just with this color. You're not doing a full wash, just kind of put in a little bit here and there. And that's kind of help to sell a little bit of a rust effect. For the rust effect, I'm going to be using Oak Brown from Army Painter's War Paint series. This is a shade of brown that is definitely brighter than the Rhinox High, so it's maybe like a mid-tone brown color. And I'm sticking to the areas where I just applied the Seraph and Sepia. So next up, I'm taking some Troll Slayer Orange from Games Workshop's Citadel line of paints. 
I'm mixing this into the oak brown that I have and I'm applying it right to those areas I just applied the oak brown, but I'm not covering all of the previous layer of color. So while that layer is still drying, I'm gonna take a little bit more of the Troll Slayer Orange and using just the tiniest amounts of this paint, I'm gonna apply it right into those areas that are rusty. Two steps currently remain, and one of them is having fun with little doodads that run along the barrel right here. I'm gonna make them look like lights. Starting with some Mephiston Red from Games Workshop Citadel line of paints, I'm gonna coat all the surfaces that I wanna make into red glowing lights. Next up is Evil Sun Scarlet, a layer paint from Games Workshop Citadel line of paints. I'm gonna put some of this back on top of the Mephiston Red, but I'm not gonna cover up all my base coat. This is a brighter color than Mephiston Red. The final step is gonna to be to take some linen white and put a little dab of white in the middle of each of the lights. This helps convince your brain that it's glowing a little bit because there's a bright white color in the center of the light. I wanna add some blast effects to the front of the plasma weapon. So I'm gonna take some black here, it's gonna be Abaddon black. I'm gonna dry brush it on the front of the barrel to give the illusion that it's burnt and charred from weapons fire. So with that, I'm gonna call this weapon done. Thank you guys all for watching this painted tutorial video of the Melta Cannon for a Reaver Titan from Adeptus Titanicus. Once again, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. Go ahead and subscribe to see more videos like this or the other projects that I work on like robotics or 3D printing and things along those lines. So until next time, have a great week.